Now, earlier, we asked you which screenwriter of a popular drama all about the royals is celebrating his birthday today. Well, it's Peter Morgan, the creator of The Crown. He turns 60 today, as well as the brains behind this hit series. Peter Morgan has also written plays, including The Audience and films such as Frost Nixon. And I've met him and he's a properly cool guy. Now, let's take a look at the front pages of this morning's papers with broadcaster and journalist Thomas Copeland uh, and broadcaster and writer Gemma Forte. Hello to you both. Thanks for joining us. Gemma, to you, first of all, what's caught your eye? Um, a few stories, but I think the first one that I'm going to be looking at is about these ads that Labour have been running, um, obviously gearing up for the May elections, which will be happening on the 4th, and we can see they're really going into attack mode. Um, so there's been a lot of controversy about these ads that have been mainly platformed on Twitter because they've really been very, very personal. So rather than just go for the record, they've actually signed them off with Rishi Sunak's signature and said things such as Sunak didn't think child sex abusers should go to prison. So not I, I personally think they are sinking to a level that is the kind of level that we saw when Nigel Farage, for instance, stood in front of that that poster intimating that thousands of Turkish people would be coming here, which simply wasn't true, or the big red bus with the lie on that, of course, will go down in history. I kind of feel like they can just go for the dismal record. Surely you've got, you know, a thousand sure start centres have closed since the Conservatives came into power. Uh, debt is up from 850 billion to 2.5 trillion. Surely these facts could just speak for themselves. And what it's done as well is it seems to have divided the Labour Party up a bit. So I think Yvette Cooper doesn't think that these ads are a good idea. John McDonnell has come out and critic criticised them as well. However, Storm seems to be doubling down. Perhaps he thinks that these are going to cut through in a way that Labour haven't previously. Um, so we'll have to see whether they do indeed do the job. OK, Thomas, you're looking at the Telegraph for us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, no, well, I was going to start off with The Guardian, I think, actually. They're leading with a front page on what they call the most comprehensive review into race inequality in the UK in 25 years. 14,000 people reviewed. I can give you a few of the headline stats from it. One in three people from uh, ethnic and religious backgrounds experiencing physical or verbal assault in the UK. One in six goes up to phys just physical assault. And actually, that number goes even higher if you're uh, Jewish. One in five people, apparently, uh, and one in three for Roma people in the UK, 17% uh, of ethnic and religious minorities in the UK saying that they've had their property damaged on account of their um, of their minority status. Um, most of that coming in actually, you know, rather than physical and verbal abuse, most of that discrimination, according to the survey, coming in in education and employment in particular. Um, and The Guardian have some good graphics that encourage people to go and take a look that illustrates it really well. The flip side of all this that's really interesting is actually, despite all of those maybe um, striking, but to a lot of people, probably not that shocking, uh, those statistics. Uh, it is racial and ethnic minorities that seem to have a very strong sense, according to the survey, of association and identification with British society, with a sense of British and identity, and that never clashes with their own association with, with an ethnic or uh, r racial identity. They have higher levels of trust, the survey also found, higher levels of trust in government and devolved government all the way down than quite a lot of white British groups, and, and, and that's particularly interesting throughout the pandemic when there were lots of questions asked about the way in which that racial and ethnic minorities were being considered when it came to advice that was given out throughout the pandemic. So you've got a sort of a tale of, you know, a, a story of two sides there, way more work needing to be done to crack down on some of the abuse being received by ethnic and racial minorities in the UK, but also okay. some sense of progress, which is a huge sense of resilience in what British identity means and how that's changing and it's not being held back. OK, um, Gerard, I'm going to risk asking you to tell me about uh, the song front page and the um, gold carriage aircon. Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, on the way to the coronation, the king will be in an aircon um, uh, carriage, which has shock absorber. And then on the way back, he's going to be bumping it around in, a, in an old carriage that was made in 1760, so not quite so comfortable, although I'm sure he'll survive. Uh, OK, and a very quick thought. I, I, I called it a carriage, and I know it's a coach, and now I'm furious with myself. Uh, Thomas, really quickly, before we join you again in the next hour, why are you in New York? 
Um, I'm, I'm studying in New York at the moment. I'm studying a postgraduate degree in journalism at Columbia University, thanks to the Fulbright Commission in the United Kingdom. Yeah. So it's very early in the morning here. Yes, you've yeah. got the time up on the screen. It's about a quarter to. Th- it's about ten to three. What is it, five to three? Okay. Yeah. The kettle, the kettle is on, and a few cups of coffee have been had. Excellent, uh, clever clogs. Uh, we'll see you again in the next hour, both of you. Thanks very right. so much indeed for joining us. Thanks a lot. That's the way it's looking so far this uh, this, uh, Easter Monday. I was going to say bank holiday, but of course it is uh, as well. Coming up in the next hour, we're going to be taking you to Northern Ireland again to talk about the visit by President Biden. He is arriving tomorrow evening for the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. All of that to come in just a moment. Do stay tuned.